What's up guys? Today we're going to cover uh, the layers of the heart and also some external anatomy on the heart. Alright, All right, so here we go. Starting from outside to inside. Okay, the outermost layer of the heart that's touching the very surface of the heart is the um, epicardium or visceral pericardium. Both of those two terms are synonymous. You can use either one, epicardium or visceral pericardium. Then the middle layer, that's the most muscular layer. If you start to open up the heart here, you can see this middle muscular layer right here is the myocardium. The myocardium, and you can see it running along the edge right there too. It's very thick. Then everything inside of that, including most of the internal structures that you need to know, okay, that is all considered endocardium, and endo means within. So within the heart is the endocardium. Then we're going to cover some external anatomy. So the first couple terms for external anatomy is the right and left auricles. So the right and left auricles right here kind of sit. So if you're facing me, this is the right auricle in anatomical position, and this is the left auricle in anatomical position. And so what these do is they're basically blood reservoirs. So they fill with blood if the atria are filled with blood and there's no more room. So they're kind of like pouches that expand like sponges if there's too much blood in the atria. Then we have ligamentum arteriosum, which is just this little piece of connective tissue right here. Okay, this little piece of connective tissue connecting the pulmonary trunk, which we'll cover in a later video, to the aorta. This is the ligamentum arteriosum. Okay. Next we have the sulci, or the sulcuses, um, and those are kind of dividing lines within the heart. So first of all, the heart has four, cham four main chambers, okay? It has the two atria on top, okay? And then it has the larger ventricles on the bottom, okay? And so dividing the atria from the ventricles is going to be this coronary sulcus, which goes horizontally and through the back as well, okay? And it kind of divides, okay? So you see it right here, going all the way around. This is the coronary sulcus, which is the groove where all those vessels sit within, okay? The anterior interventricular sulcus is just going down here, and these blood vessels fill that anterior interventricular sulcus. Then the posterior interventricular sulcus is also going to be found on the back side, and those blood vessels fill the posterior interventricular sulcus, okay? And that is going to be it for external anatomy and the layers. All right, guys, in this video, we're going to cover the internal anatomy of the heart. So if we open up the right um, oracle, we can see inside of it, this tiny little, you see that little white dot right there? That is the fossa ovalis, which is actually a remnant structure of fetal blood flow. Okay, so that should close up over time. It doesn't always close up in everybody, but that little white dot is the fossa ovalis. Next, we have the pectinate muscles, which sit right here on the inside of those um, inside of those pouches. Okay, so in the inside of the atria, we have the pectinate muscles. Okay. And the pectinate muscles are just a fancy way of saying the atria muscles, okay? Then we have the trabeculae carnae, which are the muscles of the ventricles. So the lower chambers, the ventricles, have their own muscles, and you can see them right here, okay? And they also fill within that endocardium layer. All of those muscles, kind of where you see it turn red, trabeculae carnae, there are specific muscles within that. Um, that you need to know. They're called papillary muscles, and the papillary muscles are specifically where these little cords attach down onto, so they, they're a little more bulgy than the rest of the trabeculae carnae, okay? And the papillary muscles are specifically where that next term, chordae tendinae, anchor down onto, so you see these string-like structures coming down from the valves. Those are going to be your chordae, chordae tendinae, okay? So those anchor down onto the papillary muscles within the trabeculae carnae. And then our last term for internal anatomy is interventricular septum. So you see the two ventricles right here, 
right ventricle and then the larger left ventricle right here. There's this structure that divides the two and this structure is known as the interventricular septum. Okay, so in this video, we're going to cover the blood flow and the structures of the blood flow throughout the heart. Okay, so we're going to start with the deoxygenated blood, okay, which comes in through the vena cava. So we have the superior vena cava right here coming down through the top, and we have the little nub of the inferior vena cava on the bottom. Those both bring blood into the right atrium, okay. So we have the right atrium right here. You can see that. Superior vena cava right there, and you see the inferior vena cava, that red right there, bringing it in, okay? So now we're in the right atrium. Next, we're going to carry blood from the right atrium down into the right ventricle through this valve known as the right atrioventricular valve or the tricuspid valve. And why would they call it tricuspid valve? Because there are three places where these chordae tendinae anchor onto the papillary muscles, okay? So you see all these little chordae tendinae's coming down off the right atrioventricular valve? They attach onto papillary muscles, which we covered in the last video, and make up the right atrioventricular valve, okay? So here's the right ventricle. That's where we're at now. Now we're going to carry blood, pump it to the lungs. So we pump it through this valve right here, known as the pulmonary semilunar valve. Semilunar describing the um, shape of the valve. So next it goes into the pulmonary trunk. And then the pulmonary trunk sends blood to the um, pulmonary arteries. So you see one right here and you see the other one right here. They're both, notice they're both blue, okay? Because it's carrying deoxygenated blood from the heart to the lungs to get oxygen. So these are the pulmonary arteries. They sit on top of the pulmonary veins. So the pulmonary veins, you can see right there, some pulmonary veins. This was the pulmonary artery, pulmonary veins, pulmonary veins on this side. They're both bringing blood back to the left atrium. So the left atrium is going to have the oxygenated blood and then the left atrium is going to send blood down through this valve to the left ventricle and this valve is called the left atrioventricular valve or bicuspid valve or in many medical or clinical settings they call it the mitral valve. All three are the same describing the same valve. Left atrioventricular valve, bicuspid or mitral. So now we're in the left ventricle and then the left ventricle, and you see that little valve right there kind of trying to hide, okay? So you see this valve way back here, okay? This is the aortic valve, and guess where that brings blood to? You guessed it. Brings blood to the aorta right here, okay? And so the aorta has three main regions of it. So that the region of the aorta bringing blood up is the ascending aorta. So it's the ascending aorta right there. Then this part that kind of curves is the aortic arch. And then the part of the aorta bringing blood downward is the descending aorta. Descending aorta. And then that should be it for the blood flow through the heart. The next video should cover the coronary blood vessels. All right? Good luck, you guys. What's up, guys? Going to cover the coronary blood supply real quick. So we'll start off with arteries. So the right coronary artery takes off directly from the aorta right here. So this is the right coronary artery coming off the right side. Then going underneath the pulmonary trunk, so you can't see it right there. Then you see this little snippet of it right there. You see that just little, little tiny sliver of it. That's the left coronary artery right before it branches into the two arteries. The circumflex artery that wraps around towards the back underneath the left atrium, and the anterior interventricular artery, which wraps down the front. Coming off of the right coronary artery, you could be tested on a vessel that goes down this side, known as the marginal artery of the right coronary artery. And then the only artery on the back side you need to know is the posterior interventricular artery, that red vessel just going right down here, posterior interventricular artery. Okay, the way I do it is I find the inferior vena cava, and then I'm like, cool, right underneath is the posterior interventricular artery. 
So then for the veins, for the veins we have the great cardiac vein coming down the front, the blue vessel coming down the front, great cardiac vein. On the back side, we're going to have the coronary sinus, which is this nice big bulgy vessel right there. So that's kind of a blood reservoir where all the blood pools before it dumps back into the inferior vena cava. And don't get these two mixed up. Directly underneath the inferior vena cava is the middle cardiac vein right there, that blue vessel. And over here on this side, we have the posterior cardiac vein, which is closer to the left atria. Okay, that's the posterior cardiac vein. The last vein you need to know is underneath the right atria, wrapping towards the back side. This is the small cardiac vein. Okay, so that wraps underneath the inferior vena cava right there, from the front to back on the underneath the right atria. This is the small cardiac vein. And that should be it, guys. <laughs>